Did you know the bite of a mosquito can lead to this particular condition? It's not the mosquito bite per se, but it is what the mosquito carries within that leads to this condition. It carries a worm called as the Wuchereria bancrofti. It is a nematode worm and the condition is called elephantiasis or filariasis. Elephantiasis is the terminal stage in the infection of Wuchereria bancrofti. It starts with light infection where it causes filarial fever. This is characterized by headache, fever as well as mental depression. But as the worms reproduce and increase in number, it starts inflaming the lymph vessels, causing lymphangitis. It inflames the lymph glands, lymph adenitis. And finally, it can also physically cause blockage of lymph vessels and lymph glands. This leads to retention of the lymph fluid, causing the swelling called lymphedema. The swellings are usually noticed in the extremities of the limbs and in males, sometimes in the scrotum, and in females in the mammary glands. The tissue where the swelling is seen becomes fibrotic because the fibroblast cells accumulate in this area. It even leads to disintegration of your sweat glands and the skin becomes very rough. At this stage, it is a full-blown elephantiasis infection. Wuchereria bancrofti is a digenetic parasite. In our previous videos, we have been learning about parasitic organisms, right? So we have been looking at um, infections in humans caused by protozoans and worms. We have seen monogenetic parasites, meaning these organisms require only one host. But this worm is digenetic, meaning it is going to require two hosts for its survival. The first is human and the second is very specifically female Culex mosquito. Human is the primary host and the mosquito is the secondary host or the intermediate host. The worms go through their sexual cycles within the primary host and their asexual cycles within the secondary host. These organisms are nematodes. So like all nematodes, the sexes are separate and they show sexual dimorphism. Their body is long and narrow and it is creamy white in color. The anterior ends are blunt whereas the posterior ends are pointed. Similar to Ascaris, the female's posterior is straight, whereas the males have a curved posterior. Here too, you would notice certain features that occur in both the sexes, but certain features that occur only in the male or female. So both the worms have their mouth, their digestive system, which spans from the mouth till the anus or the cloaca, the nerve ring around their digestive system, as well as their gonopore. In female, the digestive system ends in the anal pore. Also on the ventral side, they have the genital pore or vulva. This helps them during mating as well as to release their offsprings. You can see that the female ovaries are releasing the eggs which are making their way into the uterus. The males have a cloacal aperture at the curved end. They have testes and a pair of unequal chitinous spicules that are present near the cloacal aperture called as the copulatory spicules. They help in attaching to the female during the reproductive process. They also have these structures called papillae which are sensory organs in the male. It helps in the reproduction process. Wuchereria is a ovoviviparous worm. Now what does this mean? It means that it produces young ones using eggs but these eggs hatch within the body of the mother worm and then the worms crawl out of the mother's body. So it appears as if the mother worm is giving birth to young worms but that's not the complete story. And the released worms are called as sheathed microfilaria. Do you remember the larval form of Ascaris? It was called rhabditiform, right? Here it is called as microfilaria. This is the worm that we discover in the human body when we are trying to diagnose somebody with a Bancrofti infection. Just like in Ascaris, Bancrofti also undergoes molding. So the sheathed microfilaria can become the sausage-shaped larva, which is the first stage larva. They undergo further molding to become this long, infective third stage larva.
This is the infective stage of the larva which enters into the human. Now let's see how exactly this digenetic infection happens. The infection starts with a mosquito containing the Vucereria larva biting the human. This third stage larva then enters the bloodstream of the man and reaches the lymphatic vessels. It undergoes third molting to become the fourth stage larva and fourth molting to become a young one. These young ones attain sexual maturity and become a male and a female. The male and the female worms are tightly coiled in the lymphatic vessels and they are very difficult to separate. They undergo copulation and the female releases the sheathed microfilaria that exhibits nocturnal periodicity. Now what is this? In patients having filariasis, we have noticed that we are not able to find the worms in the blood if the blood test is taken during the day. It's only during the later part of the day, like during the night, the worms come out into the circulation. So, scientists have theorized that during the day, maybe the worms go into the deeper part of the vessels and then they return to the peripheral or the circulatory blood uh, somewhere around 10 p.m. to 4 a.m. We still don't know why the worm has uh, such a life cycle and it is still an ongoing research topic. But it is believed that somehow the worms have evolved to match the feeding time of the mosquitoes. So it knows that if it has to successfully go from one human to another, a mosquito has to um, bite the human and suck the blood, right? And Culex mosquito has this behavior where it feeds especially at night and in the evenings. And somehow this worm has figured that out and has created its own circadian rhythm to match that of the mosquito. When a mosquito bites this human containing microfilaria, it enters into the mosquito. Here they reach the midgut of the mosquito where the sheath of the larva gets dissolved. The X sheathed microfilaria, it reaches the hemocele, which is the cavity outside of the gut. From there, it digs through the body and reaches the thoracic muscles of the mosquito. Here, they transform into the first stage larva, which is also called as the sausage-shaped larva. This larva undergoes first molting to become the second stage larva. The second stage larva undergoes second molting to become the third stage larva, which we know is infectious to humans. The third stage larva reaches the labium of the mosquito. Now, when this mosquito bites the human, the larva enters into the blood of human and the cycle continues. This is the human part of the cycle and this is the mosquito's part of the cycle. There are specific time periods for various parts of the cycle to occur. For example, um, it may take about 5 to 18 months for the young ones to attain sexual maturity. The sheathed microfilaria has to be transferred into the mosquito within a span of 70 days or else these microfilaria die in the human body. The larval sheath takes about 2 to 6 hours to get dissolved in the gut of the mosquito. Once the sheathed microfilaria enters into the mosquito, within about 2 days, it converts itself into the first stage larva. The first stage larva takes about 10 to 20 days to become the third stage larva. What all these time periods mean is that Vucereria can comfortably live and multiply in the human body for years together. Here too, prevention is always better than cure. In addition to being the secondary host, mosquitoes also are mechanical carriers between humans. So prevention of the disease involves prevention of spaces which can breed mosquitoes. So how do we do that? First step is you can spray pesticides like DDT and BHC in mosquito breeding grounds. This could be a problem because pesticides are an added pollution to the environment. So a more sustainable way is to introduce organisms that prey on the larva. So organisms like the Gambusia fish, uh, which feeds on the mosquito larva, as well as the Eutrichiroria insectivore plant can prevent the growth of mosquitoes. You can prevent getting bitten by mosquitoes using mosquito nets and repellents. Finally, if you find stagnant water, 
we can pour kerosene or pyrethrum oil on it so that the mosquito larvae dies. Mosquito larva on stagnant water comes to the surface for breathing. A layer of kerosene on the stagnant water prevents the larva from utilizing the oxygen in the atmosphere, therefore killing them. 